Hype TV people! So the reason I wanted to do this video right now is that we're going to dedicate this video into what is the subfloor construction when doing underfloor heating. That's what this is. And I thought this is the perfect time, and I mean perfect time, to demonstrate what it is and how it should look. So this is now prepped and this means that it's now ready for the floor screed to go down and the floor screed is due to go in tomorrow. So just to show you guys what it's like. So what we've done here is we've marked out where the kitchen's going. So we don't have any pipes under the kitchen because that's the reason is depending on what the said person, the owner is going to keep in those um, kitchen cabinets let's just say you're in the kitchen area like so as you can see here there's nothing so the kitchen units are going all the way down there as demonstrated by my lovely assistant the tickling stick all the way around there around there back down and across there's nothing there because if you imagine you're going to keep some foods in there like uh, bread potatoes vegetables or whatever else with the heat off the underfloor heating is going to then transfer into there it's going to make it really warm the foods are going to start going off really really quickly so we don't do that but in terms of the progress as you can see we have lots and lots and lots and have a look at that for review folks so this is where the stairs are going which are going to go up here we've got the manifold there so what this is this is the brains behind it. So this is where all the pipes go in. So we've got an in for the lounge and a lounge. And we've got a little pressure gauge there. And that, and that enables us to set the pressure or see what the pressure is. And we've got the hall. So you've got in and out on the hall, in and out on the study. So as you can see, it's all labeled up. And then what we do to check for leaks is we get a little air compressor, put it in there and we pump air into all these pipes to make sure it holds pressure. And that's what this is for. So that's showing us that we've got just over two bars worth of pressure. And that is to obviously determine whether there's any leaks in the system before we put any screed down. Because if you imagine once this has got all screed down, we're never ever going to have access to it again. So good little tip there is to do what's called a dry test where we put pressure in there and hold it for a few days to make sure that it holds up pressure and then we know there's no leaks. In the event of having a wet underfloor heating, if you're putting a solid slab down or you're putting a new floor into a property, whether it's digging out the old one and putting a new one in, or whether you're putting a new one in an extension or a new build, this is, the, this is what we do. So first of all, we dig down and we put roughly between 100 and 150 mil is worth of hardcore. We put that down first. Then on top of that, we put sand blinding, which means it's probably about an inch to two inches worth of sand over the top. And that's to give it a smooth surface. And then we whack it down to give it a nice smooth surface. And then we put, what's, then we put down what's called DPM, which is basically this, a big piece of plastic, which completely covers the floor um, all the way around. And that is to stop any damp coming up through the floor and into the concrete slab. So, and then you put your foot, you put all this down. And then what you do is you pour your slab on top, which is your concrete. So then you pour between 100 and 150 mil worth of concrete everywhere. And again, this method is specifically for underfloor heating. So you pour your concrete everywhere. It's 100 to 150 mil on top of your DPM. Yeah. And then what you do is obviously you can carry on working, etc. And then when you're ready for your underfloor heating, you then put on top of the concrete slab another layer of DPM, which is another layer of plastic. You then put 150 mil worth of PIR, which is the big sheets of insulation. And I've actually got some out here, so I'll show you what it is. So if you can see, it's that stuff there. So the big eight before sheets, which is eight foot by four foot or 1200 by 2.4 meters. And it's 150 mil thick, which is six inches. So you put that down and then you put your top layer of uh, DPM again, or you can use a vapor control barrier. It doesn't need to be a thick gauge. It can be quite a light gauge. 
So if I can pull this back here, there you can say there you go. That's what your v, that's what your VPC, that's what your insulation is. And then you put this down on top. So as again, as I was explaining to you just, there's the bit that goes underneath. There's the, the DPM that goes underneath the insulation. Then you put your insulation down, then you put another layer of this on top. And that's what's called your vapor control barrier, your VPR. And that's so that the, you wrap the insulation into that, and so, so it stops the condensation. And then on top of it, you put your screed. Now, generally speaking, if you're going to use liquid screed for an underfloor heating, rule of thumb is roughly you want about 50 mil or 60 mil, and it's all about the thermal mass. So this is all going to be one big, big sheet. So when you're doing underfloor heating, you're supposed to leave it a long, long time to cure before you put in there because of expansion. So if you imagine when you fill this with all hot water, if you put something down, unless it's really, really dry, if you put this in there, you're going to have expansion from the hot water. So the pipe's going to expand a little bit. It could cause the screed to crack. So it's very, very important that you leave it for the set drying time. So if you're doing a dry mix, a dry screed, you need to leave it for longer. If you're doing a wet mix, believe it or not, I find it goes down a lot easier, it goes down a lot quicker, and it also dries a lot quicker. Now, in the, t in the terms of this project, we're a long, long way from doing it anyway, because as you can see, the electrics have just about been done. We've got to do a lot of plastering, etc. We've got to do the door frame, so this isn't going to get tested now for a long, long time, which is why we've got the air in there to make sure that it's water airtight or watertight. And that's, that's, that's basically it folks, for specifically underfloor heating. So again, to just recap, you've got your MOT or your hardcore about 150 mil to 100 mil. Then you've got a sand blinding and that's to take out all the sharp edges from the um, hardcore to stop it piercing this DPM, which is this plastic. So then obviously on top of the sand, you put the DPM, which is this plastic all the way around. So it can't be pierced. Then you lay your concrete on top of that, which is roughly 100 mil to 150 mil. Then you put another layer of this DPM on top of it to wrap your insulation in. So then you put your insulation down. Then you put the DPM on top of the insulation, which is called the vapor control barrier, the VPL, on top of that insulation. And then you put your pipes and then you pour your screed. And obviously you also need to remember that on all the outsides, you've got 25 mil insulation upstands to stop anything from here going through and touching the wall to stop any what's called thermal bridging and that's it and the reason that i've done a video on this is because it's a different method than if you're doing a normal um floor with no underfloor heating because then what you would do it would you would flip it around you'd flip the concrete and the insulation method around so you'd go hardcore sand blinding insulation sorry dpm insulation DPM again, and then you put your concrete on top of the insulation. The reason we do it this way, we're doing underfloor heating, is so that the con so, so that the the hot water pipes are straight on top of the insulation. So one, it's easy for them to clip down into the insulation. So these are the clips. So it's good to hold it down, as you can see there. And the second of all is obviously we want it, we want this to save as much heat as we can. So being directly on top of the insulation means it hasn't got to try and transfer through the concrete floor slab. So it's to make this more effective and more efficient. So the difference between underfloor heating and non-underfloor heating is you flip around the insulation and the concrete floor, the sub base. And that's it folks, quick update from me. Stay tuned for the next video, I'll see you soon. Mwah.